Welcome to a new season in our lives. We are on a mission to demolish the arguments that have kept us from taking our next step towards true Christian authenticity. Are you ready to tear down those self-protective masks that are holding you back in life, in business, in relationships? It's about mindset, but more specifically, learning to keep our minds set on Christ, regardless of circumstance. This is the Mindset School Podcast. I'm your host, Peggy Easterling. Let's be real, okay? Are you ready? Let's go. Let's be real, okay? I want to welcome you in this week and thank you for taking your valuable time to listen. I want to just get real with you. God has been just dealing with me. I've been in a pruning season. He's just been doing pruning. He's been just pulling away some mindset things that I've still had limiting me in my own mind. Some of you have not heard of the term pruning before. It's a new concept to you. And when I say pruning, I'm not talking about that shriveled raisin looking fruit. (laughs) I am talking about the gardening that we do to our trees, that we do to our lives. That's representing of cutting things back, getting rid of things so new growth can occur. Me and my daughter love house plants. And she is the type of house plant keeper that if she sees a house plant, I always tell her she throws it away at its first sight of distress. <laughs> Where I hold on to the ones that look like there's no chance of life left <laughs> before I give up on them. If she has a plant that's needy, we call them dramatic drama plants where they just wilt and fall over and act like they're dead every time that they need water. She won't keep up with those. She will get rid of those because they're too dramatic for her. But me, I like that. I like, okay, fall over. I'll give you some water. But the pruning that needs to occur is the dead leaves that you have to just cut back. You see those leaves that are dying and you prune them. You cut them back so that the new growth can occur. The new life can come forth. And about pruning, as a general rule, a light summer pruning can be done. But your heavier pruning where you really cut back, it needs to be done at a very specific season. And this is late in winter, right before active growth occurs. I want to say that again. The heavier pruning is seasonal. So if you're feeling like God's stretching you and you're being pruned, no. Just no. If you're uncomfortable and God's peeling back some things in your life, be expectant. Because that active growth, that late winter is here. And the next thing is that active summer growth, that active season of growth. I want that to sink in. John 15, 2 says, and I'm reading from the Amplified Version, every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that continues to bear fruit, he repeatedly prunes so that it will bear more fruit, even richer and finer fruit. Pruning is vitally important for us to grow in our walk with God. Are there things in your life that it's time to cut them off? Are there some mindsets That God's been dealing with you for this for a minute. Is it time to cut them off? Are there dead branches in your life, on your tree, and it's time to cut them off? There's a psychological concept called cognitive restructuring. And this is a process. It's part of cognitive behavioral therapy, which is also called CBT. 
And it is where individuals learn to change their negative or destructive thought patterns. And it's like pruning. It's helping you remove these unhelpful beliefs and replacing them with helpful and more beneficial thoughts that serve you. Thoughts that will help you move in the right direction. And so cognitive restructuring is identifying and then changing. So one of the things I want you to see is if you know that God's been dealing with your life and you know he's leading you to a specific area, to making some restructuring happen in your mindset, this cognitive restructuring that occurs, this intentionally using your mindset, your mental real estate to serve you is exactly what God is wanting you to do. He wants you to shift your mindset to demolish the arguments and take every thought captive that doesn't serve you. So this process is a lot like pruning a tree. Have you ever had someone tell you to do something and it just was not the season for it? I know I have. I have had someone give me advice on to eat certain things or advice to do a certain thing. And it just wasn't what God was dealing with my heart at the time. It wasn't the season that God had that for me. It wasn't where I was at in life. The Holy Spirit is so important as part of this pruning process because God wants to prune us in season. If you prune a tree when it's not the season to prune it, it can be detrimental and deadly to the tree. You can kill the tree by doing the pruning at the wrong time. So the pruning has to be done at the right time. Have you ever had someone give you advice? You've got to do this for your health. You've got to eat this or you've got to do this for your spirituality. You've got to do this. And it didn't land. Maybe you were in a conversation and your wall went up 100%. And it's not that the thing that they were giving you isn't good advice. For you, because number one, it wasn't what God had been dealing with you with. And number two, if you did the thing that they said, you would have to lose your focus on the thing that God had been dealing with you with to give attention to the thing that God had dealt with them with that they wanted to hand you. Now, if you're a friend listening and you do offer advice to friends, I'm not saying that there's never a time to offer advice to friends. But if they do put up their wall, know that they may recognize that what you're sharing with them is probably good advice. But it may not be the season for them to take that advice from you. God works with us and on us in his time. The person that I was a year ago when I was reading scripture is not the person that I am today as I read scripture. And it looks totally different from where I sit today, reading it through the lens of who I am today with Christ. He has pruned so much out of my life. He still has so much more work to do on me but I'm so grateful that I can walk with him and trust in his time. He's going to prune all of the things out of my life. John 15, four, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Trying to do what someone else sees for you to do may not be the season. It may not be the season for that. So everything has to be done in a season. Psalm 35 says, Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing 
comes in the morning. No, if you're walking through your pruning season right now, that rejoicing is on the way. Pruning involves removing unhelpful beliefs and replacing them with beliefs according to God's word that serve you. The more that that belief system that you have is according to how God sees the world, how God wants the world to function, God's view, make it obedient to Christ. Make your thoughts obedient to Christ. Make your mindset obedient to Christ. And the more you're able to do that, the more you're able to walk in that cognitive restructuring, and the more you're able to prune those things out of your mindset, out of your life, out of your actions, because how you think affects how you feel and how you feel affects what you do, the actions that you take. So that pruning, that thing that you're allowing God to prune out of your life, let it change you in his time, in his season. Let's talk about pruning and forgiveness. Letting go of past hurts. Y'all, forgiveness is like pruning. Letting go of grudges, letting go of past traumas. This can be seen as a form of pruning. By releasing all the negative emotion, all of that that didn't serve you. I Think of a coffee cup. You've got your coffee cup and you want to fill your coffee cup with God. And if your cup is full of all of your past and all of the things that don't serve you, and you've only got a little space for some creamer at the top. Are you like me? You like your coffee with a lot of creamer? So if you only have enough space for a few drips of creamer, it's not going to be what you want in that cup. Well, the same thing is true if we don't allow God to prune us and let go of those past hurts, to let go of those traumas, to let go of unforgiveness. We just did in the Mindset School, we were wrapping up a Bible study just this week. Uh, Don't Look Back by Christine Kane. I highly recommend not just the book, but the Bible study guide with the streaming video because it is a powerful, powerful study. Lives were changed in the mindset school just doing this study together. Oh my. And I'll tell you, there were some coffee cups that were full when we walked into the space of our own way. But if we want the goodness of God in our lives, we've got to make that capacity for our cup to be filled with him available to him. And in order to make that room, we've got to prune. We've got to empty of ourselves so that we can feel with more of him and his goodness. So by releasing some negative emotion and letting go some of our past, we were able to have more room for Jesus in our cup. Because really, he is the water in our cup. He is the life that changes lives. It is him 100%. And we get in our own way when we don't allow him to prune prune back the things in our lives that aren't serving us. What do you need to prune? There's also a concept in psychology called behavioral activation. And this is simply... Engaging in activities and doing things that bring joy to your life, joy and fulfillment. While we are also reducing and eliminating behaviors that contribute to depression and anxiety, replacing activities that contribute to negative mindset, negative emotion, and replacing them intentionally with activities that bring us joy and fulfillment in life. 
What for you do you need to make a behavioral activation switch? Are you a workaholic and God has told you to set down some work? Or is the opposite true for you? Is it time to get to work? And God's leading you in that direction because some of that work that you've been putting off could bring you joy and the fulfillment of that working and getting to that end result. Is there some joy available for you there? What's God leading you to? Behavioral activation. Is there something God is wanting to prune from your life? in order to get you where he wants you. He's been pruning me. Y'all, I do not want it to escape you that I'm completely human. I, through tears, have just humbled myself recently before God. I've been asking him for direction. I've been asking him for clarity. I've been seeking his face. And in this time with him, he's been pruning. He's been cutting things from me. He's been cutting my own mindsets out of the way. This season of pruning is not always easy. The process of pruning and cutting back is cutting. And cutting brings exposure. Think of the branch when it's cut and the exposure. Sometimes there's sap there. So if you're in a season of cutting and pruning and the tears that have fallen from your face and your eyes as you've laid out before God and sought his face, I want to tell you that's okay. If no one else will tell you, I want to share with you. That's okay. God sees your tears. Psalm 34, 18 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. If you are going through this pruning season and feel you are being crushed, then God is close to you. Know that he is close to you right where you are. Lamentations 3.22 says, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I know God's been pruning distractions from my life. Are there distractions that may be good things? If you were listing a list of things you wanted for your life, these things may be on your list. But just because they're good things doesn't mean they're God things. And when I say that, I mean God things for you right now in this season. So is there something that you want in this season for your life, but it isn't what God has for you in this season of your life that you need to prune For this season. And no, I can set this aside for now, knowing that it doesn't mean that God's making me give it up forever. I can prune this from my life now and know that God can bring something even better than I could possibly imagine in this place. What is it that God's called you? to set down that may be a good thing. God had me for years volunteering in in kids ministry. And I love kids. I love working with kids. I love being around kids. I just love kids. I love their energy. I love their smiles. I love how much fun I have whenever I hang out with them. I love their innocence. But it was time for me to go volunteer in a different space in church. And God led led me to move into a new direction. So what is it for you? 
And if you're listening and God's calling you to kids ministry, this is not permission to set that aside because the Holy Spirit can convict you and share with you internally. What's next? What does God have for you next? Is the good thing not the God thing right now? Warren Buffett is known as one of the most financially successful people in the world. And he once said that the difference between successful people and really successful people is that really successful people say no to almost everything. He has this ability, this wisdom to create wealth. And he speaks and shares that the ability to create wealth in his life and the success that he has, and he accounts it to saying no to almost everything. How does this relate to this principle of pruning in our own lives? What do we need to uh, to allow God to prune from our lives and say no to in order to spend time even with him? What is it? that he's calling us to cut out so that he gets the space that he wants and desires of our lives, of our prayer lives, of our time to listen, of our time to study his word. What does he want to prune out so that we can give space to him? What is it for you that it's time to set down And let God prune from your life so that you can do the thing that he's calling to you to. Is it TV time? Is it social media time? Is he pruning those things from your life for a season? Or the amount of time that you spend on those things? Is he pruning them out? What's he called you to? In Isaiah 38, The story of Hezekiah. The story of Hezekiah is found in a few spots in the Bible. It's in 2 Kings, in 2 Chronicles, it's in Isaiah. But Hezekiah was the 13th king of Judah. And he's known for his religious reform and his faith in God. He became king and reinstated the Passover. He removed some idols and some pagan altars. During his reign, there was an Assyrian threat and Jerusalem was threatened. Hezekiah, he fortified the city. He created a tunnel to secure the water supply, and he sought help from the prophet Isaiah. And despite all odds, he refused to surrender to the Syrians. But when the Syrian army besieged Jerusalem, Hezekiah prayed for deliverance, and God responded through the prophet Isaiah, promising that the city would be saved. Later in his life, Hezekiah fell gravely ill. He prayed to God and God through the prophet Isaiah. He was told his life would be extended by 15 years. In Isaiah 38, 5, go and say to Hezekiah, this says the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Behold, I will add 15 years to your life. (laughs) Y'all, just this scripture alone should make us stop apologizing when we cry. God heard his cry. He saw his tears. So he heard him pray. So pray, tears are okay. Pray and tears are okay. If you're going through something and you're sharing with something, someone else and tears come, Stop apologizing for those tears. Those tears can add 15 years. I'm just saying the character of God is that he mentions this here. God sees, he hears, he knows, he knows what we've been through. He sent Jesus. We do not have to apologize for our tears. He added 15 years. Hezekiah's life because he prayed and he cried. If you're in a pruning season, 
I hope that encourages you. After this pruning season, Hezekiah experienced a renewed sense of purpose and gratitude. He praised God for deliverance and recognized the value of his life as a gift from God. The pruning process, although painful, can result in spiritual growth and a deeper appreciation for God's faithfulness. Our suffering and pruning can lead to spiritual growth, humility, greater dependence on God. It can show the transformative power of God's grace in turning our trials into opportunities for growth and renewal. If you've been in a season of pruning, I want to encourage you today, wherever you are at, wherever you're at, God sees you. He hears you. He's collecting your tears. He knows your name. He knows the number of hairs on your head and what you're walking through has not escaped him. It has not escaped him. Know that when you go through a season of pruning, growth is coming. I hope this encouraged you today. And let's be real, y'all. God's continuing to grow our lives as we tear down these walls and masks we've hid behind. And let his light shine through us. Thank you for joining me today on our journey towards Christian authenticity and a Christ-centered mindset. Remember, the masks that we wear not only hide our true selves, but also keep us held back. Living small in life, in business, and in relationships. As we wrap up, I invite you to take a crucial step towards your breakthrough. I created the Breakthrough Quiz just for you. Head over to the mindsetschool.net slash quiz and dive in to discover a guide to move you closer to your authentic self and renewing your mind God's way. Until next time, let's be real, okay?